here. Okay, this is part three of the yoke blouse design. We finished the all-in-one yoke. We finished the front panel. Now we're gonna be draping the back panel, and that's what's next. guys I hope you've been watching all the episodes I tried to cut it up so that you can you can actually learn very specifically each part of this blouse design and the concepts behind them I hope you're gonna love this video and you're gonna follow all the way through till the end like it and subscribe and come on board because I have a lot more draping tutorials to give you as well as everything about fashion design. All right, let's get started. Preparing the back piece. Again, it's 21 inches wide by 29 inches long, torn and blocked. On the left-hand side, you're gonna go in one inch from that torn edge. You're gonna pull the grain all the way down. Pencil that in. about 10 inches down from the edge. I'm going to pull a cross grain. Press this under and we'll get on the dress form. Secure the muslin to the center back, touching the neck plate, rim, putting one at the intersection of the neck, and then just putting pins, like I said, the opposite way, so it, so it stays on there all the way along the center back. I did this cross grain here so you can see what's gonna happen again with the back. The back, you can make a little bit more straight. Keep in mind, there is no bust in the back and we don't want a back bust. So your design should not stick out like the front does. Usually it's a little bit more straight or a little bit more flared towards the bottom. So you can do it flared as well by just dropping the muslin and letting the fabric flare for you and then gathering along there. That's how you can do like a trapeze type top or a flared top. But we are again are doing a more form-fitting bottom or pegged bottom to this blouse. I'm going to then just hold it here with my right hand and then just eye where I want to have those gathers be. Then start doing the pleating or the gathering, which is taking the pin and pushing it over like that. Taking the pin and pushing it over, making like little tucks. Holding the muslin on your right, controlling where you want it to be, whether you want it to drop or whether you want it to hike up just like that. Continue to put those little tucks in with your pins, which is your gathers. It's nice to have more gathers in the center back, of course, and then less and less on the sides to show indication of a body. That is what I'm intending. And then just gather. Again, you want to be able to see that tape. If you cannot see it, make sure you have a color that you can see through. Just keep pinching little gathers till you have what you want for your design. It's smooth here at the bottom and I'm just pushing gathers towards the top. Just going to put a little bit more. I'm choosing to put very little gathers at the back. I'm pulling up the side and pulling it upwards. You can see where the grain line is hiking up. That is the indication of what's going on with the grain itself. Keep working on your design. Remove the excess. Smooth it over underneath the arm plate. 
I'm going to push this pin in so I can feel that and push this pin in here as well. I want this to flow straight. I want an indication where the waist is. And I want to have it tight along the hip line itself. Clipping at the waist. I want you to see, you can see the arm plate. I want you to see that it's falling nice. The most important part, which is the balancing. I had to adjust these pins on my gathers to drop it just a bit, as you can see. Then you hold the back to the front. Make sure you're getting on the side seam that you're not going too forward or too backwards. And you want to go to the inside line, holding the back and adjusting the back as you go along. Pulling that out, whatever you need to pull out. Balancing is getting it to be exactly the same in the front and the back on the sides. As you can see, this is not pulling either that way or this way. It is laying nice and flat. The back is also very nice and flat, relaxed like it should be on a blouse. Once you feel that you have that, and that's just a matter of adjusting all the pins to see where the lines are falling or not falling. Then you need to mark it. We're gonna do the dotting process again. You wanna go right on that tape and just dot all the way along the tape. All of the gathers like that. Pull this over the arm plate Dot on the top ridge and then put your pencil right in the groove of underneath the arm plate. Put the intersection of underneath the arm and the side seam. Lightly pencil these markings as well. Take your pencil and go through the right, the front, to the back and poke your pencil all the way through like that so you know exactly where that waistline intersection is. Keep these pins intact. Take out the whole piece from the center front. Let's get on the flat. It's very important that these are both attached. You don't want to make any mistakes at this point. This is where underneath the armhole was on the right side. I'm going to just push my pencil point again to the other side because I want it to indicate exactly where that is and that's there. So that is here and here. That is where the armhole arm is. These are all marked properly and we have the from the front carrying it over to the back. This is the proper side seam as well. So we've got this marking here and this marking here. And you want to make sure that these are marked as well. Now these pins are here. You want to make sure all your dots make sense. And this goes all the way over here because I gathered it quite a bit. Take these pins out. Now that you have these marks in the proper place, I'm going to put an ending here so I don't get confused. That goes here and it goes here. So that's the ending on that side and this is the ending, let's say, on this side. Then you want to take these pins out. this new indication
We're gonna go here with the hip curve, get the majority of the dots, and mark it exactly like it has it. And as you can see, I dropped it the one and a quarter. I went out the half of an inch. It has to go to nothing on this side, to the waist. Now I'm going to add my half of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And around the top part of the bodice where it's going to stitch into the yoke. Cut it to the seam allowance. Gather this area here to fit into the yoke. Turn the yoke there. Getting the end. And then adjusting your gathers where you want it to be. Okay, now we're going to get the side seams. I'm taking the back portion, folding it back to the front portion. Clip there a little too much. I'm going to clip here at the waist so it doesn't pull. If you do clip too far, and it is cut where it needs to be solid, you have to put a patch. So this is a little patch that I did with the muslin itself. You cut another piece, you make sure the grain on the top is going the same as the grain in the back, and then you can either hand sew it on or stitch it by machine. You want it to be solid so you have a good representation of what that side seam is. All right, let's keep, let's continue. And I want to, at this point, make this released. So I'm going to do this pin to itself. There'll be like a little opening there, as well as right here. Get on the dress form. Okay, we finished draping the front panel and the back panel. Let's get to the Mandarin collar next. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for that.